I'm Justice from C Products Defense, and we decided to do another one of these videos where we go on the road and hang out with one of our good friends. Today we've got Gabe from Roscoe Manufacturing. We're gonna talk about guns, barrels, gang stuff, and uh, mags, I guess. We're, we're gonna jump you into the barrel gang. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so give me, the, give me the, the short and sweet or the long and the hard about what Roscoe Manufacturing is as a whole and what you do for that company. All right. Uh, Roscoe Manufacturing has been a OEM barrel manufacturer now for around nine years. Uh, chances are if you've bought a rifle in factory form, we've worked with that manufacturer to make their barrels for them. We also have very huge military contracts, even some SOCOM contracts. And around 2017, um, the owner had a concept of, hey, look, you know, we've been doing this for so long for the private sector. I think we really have something to offer for the commercial end. And uh, we partnered up. Um, I presented them with a plan that I, I felt made sense. And ever since then, uh, the company has been growing by leaps and bounds. A lot of support from you guys. Can't thank you enough. Um, and a lot of the products that we've come out with come from direct intel on other projects that we've done. You know, things we've suggested to those manufacturers that can better their products. Obviously, for yeah, contract uh, pricing reasons they've decided not to go with it or their their uh, criteria in the moment. So that's where the bloodline, the purebred family came from. Uh, I'm the uh, marketing and sales director for the company, uh, but I started the commercial side from scratch in 2017. So the sauce packs came about because we started looking at things that we can offer. We had a really good uh, successful run with the accessories that SLR started making for us. And we started offering our own BCGs. Um, and uh, we you guys thinking, actually manufacture your complete bolt carrier group, correct? Yes, and we also manufacture them. That's how it ended up coming about for another big contract manufacturer, and that one has to be that that is mil spec that right. carrier that we make. It was very easy at that point because we started matching all the components to our barrels, right? To I mean, this is the main bread and butter of the gun. It's always been said, and it's always the first thing that gets blamed. So that's what gets me so excited about the sauce pack, man, because you've got all the integral parts. This is the heart of the gun. You want super efficient gas. Everything is nice and tight and designed to run in conjunction with each part. Yep. And like I said, that just, that gets me going. It's, it's just building a better mousetrap. Uh, and then the culmination of all these partnerships and knowledge and just background behind uh, working on these things and turning wrenches led us to offer the uh, URGs, our upper receiver groups. Uh, so far, we've offered them 10.5 Bloodline, 16-inch Purebred. But that's uh, cool, man. So, okay, um, I like the 13.7 a lot. I really like 12.5. Are you guys going to do the same kind of overall look and, and vibe with the 12.5? So, carbine length gas and like a, what, a 12-inch handguard? So we just launched three new handguards. This happens to be one of them. We launched a seven inch. We have a 10.75 inch, oh. and then we have a 13 inch, and and cool. that's where we're at right now. So the 12.5 will be using our 10.75 uh, handguard, and the reason why it works from 11 and a half all the way up to whatever you want. It makes and sense. It gives you enough clearance for cans for whatever you want to do. Yeah. So and um, a 12 and a half inch barrel with a 10.75 handguard still looks really really sweet oh i'm sure it does yeah it, it's very clean uh one of our um one of our pro shooters uh john dufresne from kinetic consulting mocha bear mm -hmm. some people know him as he's running a 12.5 right now he's been field testing that one for us we invited uh aaron cowan from sage dynamics and tom marshall from recoil magazine up to roscoe not too long ago to build not just those 12.5 urgs but for the upcoming Sage Dynamics signature barrel. Nice. And that was running the same type of system, just different barrel. And they tested those up there. And, and you, well, you can check uh, Tom Marshall's uh, social media page as well as Sage Dynamics. They've been running those. Mm -hmm. And then um, on the 12.5 train, we made the barrel for the Sage Dynamics signature gun through Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Yeah. So that was, 12.5 has been a big thing for us. We've yeah. really knocked that one out of the park. We're very thankful for the support on that one. Super cool collaboration too. I mean, everything. Amazing. Not only does it just look fantastic, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's just some really cool companies coming together. You know, everybody making like a purpose-built rifle that's mm -hmm. just, you know, right out of the box. It's going to be gold. So, what specifically? Extra vague question, and you answer this however you want. What makes you guys special? What makes your barrels and your equipment spectacular, or you know, unique in its own way? 
I mean, that, that's a pretty fair question. We get it quite a bit. Engineering practices and, and, and things that we have decided to do in-house that we know for a fact that other barrel makers aren't doing. Um, just the fact that we make our blanks in-house ourselves knocks out maybe 65, 70% of the competition. Yeah. And then the fact that we make our own barrel extensions in-house as well, uh, about 90% of the competition is right off the table at that point. I think that's an important distinction and lesson for the consumer to know. So, you know, education alert right here. Yeah. That's what differentiates a barrel maker from a barrel brand. I, I believe there's three basic types of barrel companies. There's the boutique level order a barrel type uh, brand, mm -hmm. you know, where it might be a company that does uh, distribution and they order up a barrel to their specs from another brand and they get it delivered. You know, sometimes they're very open about it and, and you can obviously tell because there's no background in machining or manufacturing for that brand. Uh, other times are barrel makers that make some portion of the barrel, but they're buying their blanks and their extensions from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. That's a problem because when demand goes through the roof like it has this year, and you start seeing a spike in consumer uh, activity, what happens, that barrel maker used to order from one supplier, and now they can't. So they gotta order from supplier A, B, and C. So now you start having batch consistency issues. Mm -hmm. We can track it down to a specific person at the machine, because we have many QC stations in between operations. It's really broken down into three phases. The first phase, we bring in raw, steel that comes you know 18 wheelers they dump them off in our warehouse we chop them down to to you know sizable portions and then the blank process starts on creating just the blank that's how serious we take it because we mm -hmm. sell our blanks as well to other barrel makers right um we run it through the process and then the process stops right after the rifle you know and, and a couple other things that we do that are proprietary and then they all go into the heat stress relief oven. And that's a key thing. We have two huge heat stress relief ovens that end the first part of the cycle, mm -hmm. right? And they're in there for a determined uh, time that, that they have to be to pull the stress out of the barrel. A lot of folks miss that critical phase. And some folks are taking the blank manufacturer's word on it that they're doing it right. We can control it in-house. We only have ourselves to blame at that point, right? But it's easy for us to track it down. So at that point, on the second half of the operation, after they come out of the oven, we check them for run out, and then we start our profiling, we start threading, we start chambering, you know, it goes all the way to the end. Then we send them out for coating. If they're the bloodline, you know, they're, they're uh, melanited. If they're purebred, they just get bee blasted. Uh, some areas get polished. And then when they come back from coating, we apply the barrel extension, torque it down. Then with a actual CNC machine, we do two things. We gas port it, and then we turn it 180 degrees, and we do the dimple. And, and the thank dimple God alone. for the dimple. <laughs> you would be surprised, maybe not, how many people buy our barrel just because of that. And then they find out that the performance is there. You right, know? right, right, right. Um, again, these are things that we did because we are builders and shooters first. You see us out there. I'm the marketing sales director for the company, and I'm always out at the range, you know? Uh, our, our video guy, uh, he's always out at the range with us. The rest of our sales team, you know, and, and uh, production team, they're always out in the range in their location too, yeah. testing stuff. That allows us to always be testing, always be doing product development, QC, um, and that changes the game. So we do a lot of that internally, and then we have our pro, pro shooters like Aaron, like Duffy, you know, Don Edwards from Greenline Tactical has been with us from like the very beginning. He does a lot of testing for us. He feeds back that info. So that, that's what you're going to see a lot of the people that we work with. Yeah. Pro and shooters, that's, not... That's not. one thing that I really like about Roscoe is, you know, it falls very much in line with a lot of our business model. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, we, we take it back to the heart of the gun. You guys did it with the barrels and then the other, you know, um, important parts, you know, the bolt carrier, bolt, the feed ramps, everything. Mm -hmm. um, we had the same mindset with magazines, you know. That's what our motto is, a firearm is only as good as its magazine. So <laughs> it, we're talking about two hearts of the gun. And, you know, that's, that's where the focus needs to come back to. Not, I mean, optics are great. Optic mounts are important. Rails, receivers, all of that is very important. But when we're actually talking about the 
the heart and soul of a firearm and a weapon that needs to run and run perfectly every time, mm. you, you, you can't get much more basic than that. And that's a lot of the mindset that we try to do with mags, you know? We're like, hey, mags are important, you know? We need to educate people, we need to have a good time and show people it is really important. Be a little pickier. So one of the cornerstones to the way that we do business is we believe in making a product that you buy once, you don't have to throw it away, you don't have to already have a set time to, it's gonna get replaced in a couple of years, I'll spend the same amount of money again. And the goal is to give it to your kids when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. It stays in the family, just like the firearm, the barrel, like all of this important things, we want the mags to kind of be on that level too. All right, man, so, Manufacturing, all those differences aside, tell me about Barrel Gang. All right, hit me with all that info. Uh, that that's a actually pretty funny and, and cool story. So um, the original crew that uh, started with Roscoe, right, myself and, and a couple other folks that I work with uh, over here in the South Florida side, we started spearheading not just a lot of the media that we had to do at the beginning, but a lot of the testing. Mm -hmm. You know, full auto testing, suppressor testing, all this other stuff. So every time we put out a video, um, the consumers, and like I said before, we have a, a pretty good rapport with, with uh, our followers and customers. They're like, oh, look, the barrel gang's at it again. And they're like, we'll wear it. But, you know, the main reason why we're always out there was we wanted to really, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just pushing something that we needed to sell. And that's where that idea came from. And a lot of folks started identifying with that because they liked, again, seeing people from the company actually testing products for a purpose. Yeah. And then we started surrounding ourselves with like-minded people that we saw beating the tar out of their guns and their products and, and you know, not just the rest of the barrel gang, but other companies. And I feel that that's why we get along so well because I know you guys do a lot of aggressive testing. But so what, what do you guys do as far as uh, testing or trying to push the envelope for product uh, product development. So one of the big things, obviously um, a good example, like our 556 mags, you know, we've got the speed line, which is our improved USGI aluminum stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our SS, which are our stainless steel. Okay. To us, that's the lifetime product. Um, but on those mags, you know, we get a lot of questions like, well, are, do they work for 300? Which, which uh, mags do I need for 300 blackout? And mm -hmm. I say, any 556 magazine that we put out onto the market is held to the exact same standard for 300 blackout as it is for 556. And I'm talking full auto suppressed heavy 220 plus grain ammunition being run in a variety of different builds. Um, also manipulation testing. When I go out and do lot testing every other day and it's just like these mags have to be run, they have to be QC, they have to be live fired. Even though we QC at every single stage of production from stamping to pre-welding, post-welding, all of that good stuff. Um, even the bagger has their own like set of tools and gauges before they put a mag into the bag. Very cool. Um, but it's that extra level. It's like, hey, here's all the documentation. We took this out to the range. We did a full manipulation test, meaning that that mag got ran with this ammo, variable grain weights, variations in uppers and, and firearms, and we manipulated that mag in every direction that we possibly could. Front, back, twist, left, right, clockwise. Um, you know, any, any possible pressure that you can put or force against that mag, trying to get it to fail, that's what we set out to do. And every mag has to go through that. You know, every, every lot of magazines. I'm not shooting every single mag. I don't have the, yeah. the life for that or the, uh, the bone structure anymore. <laughs> But man, I mean, it's it's important to us because like you said earlier, you know, we're putting our name on this product. I mean, we put quality control into our tooling. Mm -hmm. So um, like uh, say for instance, our post and hold design, it's a really, really aggressive locking system that comes straight out of our progressive die tooling. And we use progressive die tooling because it's the same every time. It doesn't matter who operated it on what day and how they were feeling, there's no stages to it. Every time that press comes down, it pumps out two mated pairs of a magazine and they are immediately snapped together, gauge tested, pass or fail, you know, and then so on and so forth from there. It, for the welding, all of our welding is robotic. Mm. So we have an operator that sits at the station. Their only, only focus is making sure before it's welded, they check it, they gauge it, they test all the concavity and everything, put it in, they press it, make sure everything's good. They put it on a belt. 
as they're putting that one on a belt, another one's coming out that went through welding, and they'd run through the exact same process again. Just do all the same points. Make sure that nothing changed in the welder. Made sure that the robots didn't twist it or something like that. You never know. We, we do the same before every uh, barrel goes out, which I, I love that you guys said that because we air gauge every barrel, chamber bore and groove. Yeah. We also bore scope it. We, we put it on the uh, on one of the machines to check for run out. We check the threads, we check everything. And then they go into a box. Yeah. And then and that's most the of the time difference. they just go straight out for an hour. We don't have yeah. enough ample stock right now. Sometimes just have a warehouse full of barrels. You know, that's, thank and God. And that's what I really, right really, now. really, really like about a company like this that, I mean, I can trust. And people will ask us all the time, and you see it on the groups, you see it on the forums, they're like, well, it's the same, or, you know, uh, upper receivers or barrels are the same. You know, if it shoots great, it's, it's a good barrel. It's mm -hmm. not so much true. But at the end of the day, what's really important and what it all comes down to is our life, is making sure that the customer who spent their hard-earned money mm -hmm. or the person that's working that gun professionally can depend, their, you know, their life depends on it. And that goes same true for the commercial market. Cool. Well, um, so if you want, man, I brought some stuff for us to test out. It was a regular range day for me, so I set up some drills on the range. I think we're going to do a, a, a shooting on the move kind of V drill. We may, uh, we may do a box drill after that, and then a modified Navy qual if you're down. Cool. Yeah, let's shake it up, man. All right, so if it's cool with you, I'm going to take the 13.7 purebred URG to work, and uh, we'll see what we can uh, make happen with Duramag and Roscoe. Let's do it. All right. All right, so we had an awesome time with Gabe from Roscoe Manufacturing. So if you're wanting to see those drill videos, those are coming up right after this video, coming up next, or you can go ahead and click that link. If you wanna see the entire conversation as more of a podcast style thing, go ahead and click the link in the description and you can check out the almost hour long footage of us just hanging out, chatting, and uh, talking about industry stuff. So uh, do your thing and we'll catch you later.